If the snap elections in Ukraine happens, uh, they are currently planned on the 21st of July. There is still chance that they might not happen. Uh, still, the parties need to provide the Central Election Commission with their party list already on June 10th. So these days, all the Ukrainian journalists and not just them, politicians, activists, are moving from one party convention to another party convention. So we had dozens of them almost every day uh, and the parties are announcing their party lists. What is interesting that we really found out a lot of new people we didn't know before who hadn't been in the political power. Uh, so uh, we would like to show you these uh, party conventions as well. And for instance, what was most interesting, uh, we finally got today the list of uh, Servant of the People, the party which barely existed till more or less today, the party of uh, Vladimir Zelensky. Uh, he had uh, announced uh, more or less hundreds of his uh, people. We'll go in details about that later. Uh, we had the former president Petro Poroshenko, European Solidarity, who announced his people. We don't need to show all of them now. We will go into that a bit later. Uh, so uh, we can also talk about President Poroshenko, uh, who had his party. Now it's called European Solidarity. Uh, so, but probably the most interest was to the servant of the people, uh, who uh, is a, a new party of the uh, Svetoslav Vakarchuk, and there are a lot of activists there. And in order to discuss what had happened, uh, what's going on, is really the chance of reset of this parliament. Uh, we have the great guests in the panel. Uh, we have Olena Sotnik, who is Ukrainian MP from the European Integration Committee uh, and happened to join the party of Ihor Smishko, Trans and Honor, as the second, uh, at the second position in the party list. Uh, Ihor Smishko has now according to the recent poll of the rating group, 4.8%. Uh, we also have with us uh, Vita Dumanska, who is a coordinator at election watchdog campaign, Chesno. So, Olena, first of all, uh, we'll go in the program into the party list, into the, uh, all the discussion, but you, you're an optimist. How come you're coming in this party? Who is Ihor Smishko? Uh, I guess he pretty much unknown in internationally. He used to be uh, the servant of the security service. He got quite a good, <laughs> quite a good uh, result in the presidential elections. Why? Why not, ser why not servant of the people? Why not uh, voice? Why him? <laughs> okay. First of all, uh, the, this political party is also very pro-European and the main uh, external uh, ideas, it's of course the Euro integration, uh, Euro Atlantic integration, and uh, to fight with aggressor Russian Federation. So for me, it is uh, definitely uh, the same what I feel is important for Ukraine for the future 10, 15 years, which is like our main goal to become European country, strong country in alliance of uh, other countries uh, NATO. To follow up, for instance, I would like we show the party list of Ihor Smishko. Some people are not, most of the people are not so much known That's for true. the foreigners. But for instance, you have the Rifat Chubarov, who is leader of Ukraine Crimean Tatar National Movement. Some other uh, political leaders of the Crimean Tatar movement are in different parties. Uh, you have the, uh, um, uh, you know, like what we now like. Current MP Ivan Miroshnichenko, Volodymyr Zamana, who is the chief general staff of the Ukraine Armed Forces. Uh, what would you say? Is this party a bit different that there are some of the people are new, but some are not. How do you feel in this company? Uh, the main idea was uh, to uh, have and to select professionals. Like uh, our main focus that uh, Smishko, he is a possible and uh, w I would say uh, one of the most uh, um, like interest in uh, candidates for the prime minister because he both have uh, has uh, um, uh, some experience not some a lot of experience in uh, uh, security he has a lot of experience in foreign affairs he used to be ambassador in switzerland and he has experience in uh, areas of uh, um, uh, first of all um, e external and internal relations, so it means that he can mix this idea of professionalism and, uh, of course, of wisdom and uh, of experience. And the idea was that we will have the list of people who will be ready to join government and to work from the first day, uh, because each of them 
they have their program as the possible ministers. They have uh, their initiatives uh, for the challenges of Ukraine. That was the idea. Because nowadays you, you uh, can hear a lot of, I would say, even a little bit populistic uh, um, statements like, we need new faces. I agree that we need new faces uh, compared to the old elites, but also we need professionals. And the idea was to have this combination of people who used to be uh, uh, like uh, who used to be professionals in this parliament with good reputation, who proved their uh, reputation with very practical uh, results. For example, uh, draft laws or fighting with some challenges and the idea was also to invite people who used to be in some way in executive power or other spheres which have really experience uh, to meet the challenges which Ukraine have now has now. Vita, um, in a rare interview prior to the elections, Vladimir Zelensky said that he was asked like what would be the coalition uh, and he said uh, with whom you would work and he said, like, we won't work with the current parties. That would be new parties. And then the journalists asked, like, what kind of new parties? It's just impossible. Uh, would you work with Timoshenko, Poroshenko? Like, no, there would be new parties. Everybody watched this interview said, like, what the hell he's telling to us? Now we see all the news parties, <laughs> all the new parties. The Narodny Front barely gets it to the parliament, the biggest previous party. Samopomic, the another kind of newcomer of the previous election, also is in a tough position. We don't know what's going on with the Poroshenko party. He needed to kind of remake it. Um, how do you see generally as an election watcher, how you describe this campaign and these elections and what's happened like right now? You see, probably we'll definitely have totally new parliament. We have only like two or three political forces which were a bit rebranded, a bit at just some homage added this star, like European stars, uh, Solidarity changed his name to European Solidarity. So like slight rebranding, but I think the uh, coalition definitely would be formed with new players. Because Holos, like Voice Party, they have very strong potential to grow during that um, campaign. Uh, all the old parties, they have like five, seven, eight percent, so that's really, really small amount. So definitely we will have totally new parliament uh, this summer. And I am pretty happy with that. I am pretty happy that um, political forces open their party, like open their party list and to sh uh, show to the uh, watchdog initiative to NGOs and ask them to make an inspection to check it because in 2014 only two political forces were ready to listen um, civil society that was some uh, this party invited to check their list and say who is uh, like bad guy so they they promised not including that uh, in their parliamentary list the same did Udar party but Klitschko party yeah, Klitschko party, yeah. But this uh, uh, year, like now, we receive a lot of calls from different parties. They, they are begging us, please check our, our list. We would like to know if there is somebody with bad reputation or uh, some who violated the law or something else, please tell us. We would like to filter our list. So I'm pretty happy with that. We would speak about the concerns, but probably it's worse since you're here um, uh, before to uh, g give a bit more information to our audience. We will write, you have, you can find all the publications on our webpage en.hromatsky.ua, but for instance, I would like to show the, uh, the first 10 of Volodymyr Zelensky, Servant of the People list. So we have the Dmitry Rozumkov, who is this party leader. Uh, and uh, who was kind of known during the campaign. Ruslan Sefanchuk, he's a representative in the uh, parliament and the, is a professor of law. Irina Venediktova is an expert on juridical reforms as well, an expert in law. She used to be in our, she was in our studio. Uh, David Arahami, an entrepreneur. Halina Yanchenko, an anti-corruption policies activist, now an expert, also quite known for society. Uh, Mikhailo Fedorov, the head of digital and Zelensky team. You've seen our interview with him. Alexander Kornienko as well was there in election headquarters. Anastasia Krasnosilska, expert on taxation. We had a person uh, who is the CEO of One Plus One Media Group. While ago, a famous journalist, now also a person close to Ihor Kolomoisky, because the, the channel is owned by the, the Ihor Kolomoisky, but this is the media person. 
And as well, Jean Belenuk, who is a wrestler, silver medalist of the Olympic Games, a Ukrainian African as well, what's interesting to mention. And yes, we have way more people. Mm. Uh, I think like we have the hundred names. I should say we don't know most of them. You know, they're not very much known, but some of them were those who Zelensky represented in the uh, to his administration. I probably would uh, go on with the Svetoslav Vakarchuk Holos uh, voice party. So we have the former deputy minister of economic Yulia Klimenko. We have IT entrepreneur Kira Rudik. Uh, Yaroslav Zelizniak is an activist. Uh, Alexandra Ustinova is a member for probably one of the best anti-corruption action center running at the FIFS. The lawyer Makarov. Uh, the, uh, Yaroslav Yurchitsyn, who used to work for Transparency International, a famous also journalist, Serhii Rachmanin, and uh, uh, that's that. you can see the full list on your screen and as well in your Twitter. Uh, I probably should mention that as well, uh, Petro Poroshenko, European Solidarity List, is quite interesting because he has the Andriy Parubi, a speaker of the Ukrainian parliament, who used to be in the... Uh, Narodny Front, mm -hmm. and Irina Hirashenko is vice speaker and the third, uh, and the Mikhail Zabrotsky, who is a, a veteran of the Brigade of the Armed Forces, is going there, but as well, Mustafa Jimilev and Ahtem Chigoz, they are leaders of the Crimean Tatar movement, and Ivana Klimpush Tsisnadze. Uh, the concerning list we have, which is with all the very old guys, is the list of the opposition bloc. It's quite a challenging scene. Yuri Boyko, Vadim Rabinovich, Viktor Medvedchuk, the, let's say, the god in law with Putin, Natalia Korolevska, Serhii Lovochkin, these are Nestor Shufrich, uh, Vasily Nimchenko, these are all the people from Yanukovych times. Uh, they have ten, almost 10%. Still, how do you read this? Uh, well, and I, maybe I would ask you now, not just as somebody running to the parliament. You know the people, you've been in the parliament. How you generally describe this reshuffle? Besides that, we should probably mention that uh, the government, more or less, is running with Volodymyr Groisman. Mm -hmm. I probably would ask also to, to show this list, where you have Volodymyr Groisman as a party leader. The party has very low kind of rating so far, but you have Oleksandr Sayenko, minister of the cabinet minister, Pavlo Petrenko, minister of justice. Uh, we have Amina Parva, first deputy minister of information policy, Lilia Hrinevich, minister of education and science. Uh, so how you would read the whole, this reshuffle? First of all, first of all I would separate this uh, two, uh, like this different list on two groups. First one group is all former uh, either um, uh, officials or members of the parliament. For example, if you look to the opposition platform for life, uh, we, we will see all the members of the parliament in current parliament. For example, if we are talking about Volodymyr Grossman, by the way, it is the most problematic for him because he has uh, all um, you know, members of the government, uh, which we have nowadays. It means that people, they are not, people, they are not satisfied with the policies of these uh, ministers, more or less. But they invested a lot in the promotion of the government and its achievement. Uh, maybe, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it is always the feelings of, of the the people and uh, uh, I think that the, it is the most problematic for them to get into the parliament because f people they, they are not satisfied. It's my feeling. Like uh, Petro Poroshenko of course he also uh, decided to uh, show the, in the first uh, 10 uh, people which made a lot I would say and uh, I, I don't see like in the first tense somebody who is like really like uh, I don't know with a bad reputation but uh, they are very loyal to the president uh, and uh, we will see what will be in the other in the bottom. <laughs> yes in the bottom uh, it would be the most interesting because uh, let be honest uh, that as a rule uh, when you are trying to show the, your first 10 or 20 people you are trying to show the best one uh, but also it would be very difficult for them uh, and problematic to um, maybe to uh, explain to the people why they should uh, one more time give them this mandate of trust if they are not also satisfied all this corruption uh, scandals and other things uh, if you are talking about um, oh, for example I, I, I was talk a lot about our party, so it's mixed. Also newcomers, which uh, have never used to be to the politics, but uh, we have uh, like professionals in the, from the, uh, this parliament, which shows the reputation and some uh, results. And uh, if we are talking about uh, the second group, like uh, 
particular new parties, particular new people, and it is not a secret that both of them, they made a statement that we are going to represent our list without any former MPs, or like not former, but MPs, we, we are still MPs. Uh, and I, I think it is, a, it is like, uh, uh, for, it's my opinion. It's, it is not right approach. It means that uh, both Vakarchuk and Zelensky, or oh, I don't know, the leader uh, of Zelensky, Razumkov, they really believe that uh, there is no good people, there are no good people in this parliament, like all, all the same, but it's not true. We know that it's not true and it is problematic for the, uh, uh, like strategic, from the strategic point of view, because if we are going to reshuffle all times our parliament, we are not going to have institutional memory and really professional who was fighting for a long time in some uh, spheres. Um, Vita, what's your take on all this party list? You've been screening a lot of MPs, uh, Still, if you look generally, because there were a lot of, lot of rich guys who paid for their place in party list. You see, uh, I would like to add to, to that Alana said. So basically, I can say that new, newly created party, uh, they have like more or less the same top ten. So it's like very nice picture. Two anti-corruption activists, few experts. It's like twenty percent of that, twenty percent of that. One and, famous oh, and, uh, we, uh, female quota. They, <laughs> they, 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 kept it. they really kept it. They promised they kept it. <laughs> but mostly all of the, all of the parties, by the way, kept the female quota, yeah, yeah. except oppositional platform. <laughs> They have only Some of probably did the best. <laughs> first two people, first five people, and that's like Sadovi and four ladies. So that, that's okay. So uh, first top ten, uh, they are quite similar, like anti-corruption, few professionals, and uh, like one or two stars. So that's basically the same picture uh, in both parties. Uh, I'm pretty. Uh, you ask about oligarchs. Uh, they might be in the bottom. That's one choice. The second one, uh, they won't run directly, but their representatives do. And uh, if you have, uh, for example, Chesna will check background of all the candidates. Now it's a really, really rush time, so we are checking, we are working all the nights. But if those who are new, it's really hard to find something on them. So it's really hard to tell to people, they are asking who are that people, but it's hard to find proper information. I should also say, we can confirm, we have correspondents working on the all conventions and everybody said like, we are cleaning this list, no, today we are not meeting, we are still looking, we have 3,000 people to screen. <laughs> <laughs> Is your party going to work in coalition if you get to the parliament with a servant of the people and the voice? Yeah, so and how do you see the coalition? Um, I would say, first of all, it is our main idea that we are ready to come and to take responsibility. It is the difference uh, with uh, many approaches of different parties. By the way, I think Golas can be, first of all, oppositional party. Uh, f from the previous rhetoric, I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. something will change, but from the previous rhetoric, they are more oppositional to the Zelensky. Uh, our position that uh, because of a lot of challenges, first of all, because we have like uh, support of pro-Russian political parties, and it is uh, much higher than we had before in 2014, and this is the main risk for this uh, pro-Russian revenge. Sorry, I just interrupt to explain to the people, maybe it's not obvious, that's how was the party convention of the voice party looked like because I know seeing like like what people are watching why they are showing all these people because both for instance the voice made it in the park uh, the servant of the people made it in the uh, botanic, botanic garden. garden so yeah so just look what we are showing these are all the party conventions by the, by the way, both of them in their strategies, media strategies, they are very similar, very similar, uh, both in the list and uh, how they are trying to represent their parties. But uh, coming back to the, uh, our idea, I think we have a lot of challenges inside the Ukraine, uh, IMF uh, uh, negotiations. We will have very tough uh, challenge with tariffs and uh, uh, this new winter season. Also, we will have really this pro-Russian uh, uh, revenge. 
also we will have problems with our outside coalition. I mean, our uh, partners in European Union, United States, they can change their position, they can change their strategy because you remember that we have uh, we had the European Parliament uh, elections and uh, who knows what will happen with sanctions, who knows what will fa happen in Normansk format. So we have a lot of challenges. So our main idea is that we are ready to work in coalition from the first day and uh, Smishko is the leader of the party, he, he is ready to be the prime minister and to support Zelensky newcomers team, I would say uh, like, uh, of course, uh, in our uh, language we will understand what does it mean green team. It doesn't mean the um, color, it means that they are very new, they are not experienced, they don't know how the parliament works, they don't know how the government works. So it is a huge challenge and we are ready to support them in this challenge. What will you focus on? Because another concern is how the elections on the constituencies will take place. We have half, the par half of the parliament <laughs> elected in this way. Uh, so since, you know, still, uh, I would allow myself to make a judgment. Uh, we still don't have the full list of Poroshenko. We still don't have some of the full list. However, their polls, their ratings are not that high to know that so many people would get into the list. So the people we know, it's more or less enough to understand how many. Uh, but uh, what still it looks kind of pretty inspiring compared to the expectation we had a year ago, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> quite a, it's quite a different parliament which might look like. But the battle might be in the constituencies. Is it the case? Uh, of course. So uh, what we can see that uh, this majoritarian component would ha we have, you see it, that's half of parliament. If you can filter a party list, that's easy, and party has like uh, political responsibility to toward that people they are bringing into the parliament. But majoritarian guys, uh, we see very strong competition in the constituencies because uh, it's not enough. Uh, like year ago, everybody with uh, Poroshenko brand, they supposed to win. But now situation totally changed, dramatically changed. Uh, for example, if Zelensky, uh, they have very strong brand, like the brand, <laughs> as we call here, but uh, they uh, took the strategy to bring almost no names. So people don't know that guys. Uh, they didn't work in the constituencies. They didn't, like, they were not an active people or activist. So it's really hard to believe in them. So you just have to trust to, to, to the brand because you don't know people. The same situation is the, with the Vakarchuk's party. They also, they, they are uh, bringing new people and nobody know them. So some constituencies will have like famous journalists, that's like one story, uh, restaurator, those who are uh, like small business, but uh, uh, we see like, like really tough competition in Kyiv. When, where you have like Tretyakov or other guys who are like really, really rich people and they are fighting for the death, you know? Lena, my final. Um, I would ask you about a rumor because anytime there were elections, if you worked as a political mm. journalist, you knew. They were saying like, for this party you pay in this, for this party you pay in that. There were always these rumors. Uh, what are these discussion now about these elections and the way the party lists were created? Like really, like in... Yeah, you what know, do you know? There's always the rumors that uh, somebody is behind the political forces or trying to buy some um, places in, in the list, especially in the first like 20s or something. Um, so kind of, what is the mood now uh, between the people? The mood is that uh, the stakes is so, uh, they are so high that even uh, like this old style uh, parties they are trying at, at least to show in the first row the people who are not uh, involved too much to the oligarchy groups or something. So it doesn't mean that uh, some oligarchs doesn't pay money to these political parties. I would say even more, by, for, for example, Pedro Poroshenko, he is oligarch and he is the first in the list. So uh, there is uh, no doubt that it is oligarchic money. Or for example, uh, if we are talking about the positional platform, of course, also one more oligarch in the uh, first row. But uh, if we are talking about uh, other parties, I would say that uh, they are more or less uh, seems like independent and they are trying to show really new people, but because we don't know many of them, we don't know whom they represent 
in, in, in reality, and we will see it only in the parliament. And I, I th see this as a main risk, because today we just uh, see people with, uh, with no Wikipedia, you know, story. <laughs> no, but this, it, is, it is true. That's why uh, it is the main uh, benefit for them, because they don't have any biography. And it, of course it is very, uh, uh, like, it, it is easy for the party to say, like, they are new, that's why you need to trust them. But we don't know how they will act in the parliament.